Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It is a brand new year and of course a new video for the new year. 2019, welcome, welcome back to the channel. So you guys may be wondering where I was during the holiday season. Well, there's a couple things that happened. First, my basement flooded uh, and it was a finished basement. So yeah, I had a lot of work to do. Luckily, insurance covered it, but uh, I ended up having to do the majority of the work and it's actually still ongoing. So not fun at all. Now, the other thing was that we had a ton of sales on TD Audio, a lot of custom speakers, and some of that's coming into this video, which is why I told you about it. And so I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to all you guys that purchased uh, any of your speaker projects during that time from TD Audio. I really appreciate that. You know, if you guys don't know, that's the company, of course, I run. So let's go ahead and tell you what we're doing today. Today, I have a video that is a sneak peek on a project that is coming out very shortly. This is a project that I'm going to collaborate with with Joe Intel. Now, if you're not familiar with Joe Intel, go ahead and check out his channel. There's a link down in the description below. If you are familiar with him, then you know the great reviews he does. So this is what Joe Intel and I decided on. We actually contacted Parts Express and Parts Express wanted to partner with us. So all the parts that you're going to see in these videos are from Parts Express. For those of you who have not visited Parts Express, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. They are a fantastic supplier of all spe things speaker and electronics related. So I contacted Joe and Tell and we've been in contact and I said to Joe, why don't you throw out some speaker parts that you want to use, some ideas, and we'll go ahead and design a speaker around that. So let's go ahead and show you some of the parts that we came up with and what we're going to be doing. First and foremost is the most important, and that's this, the Tang Band Woofer. Now, most of you guys know this, this is the W5-1138 SMF. And the reason why you might be familiar with this is because this is the subwoofer that is part of the Voxel Sub and also part of the Voxel Sub redesign. Now, during the holiday season, I had a customer contact me about this woofer and he asked me to make a new subwoofer design for him that is a front slot port and front facing woofer. Now, why is that so important? Well, that's because that's the exact same setup that we're going to be using in this particular build. Now, this is actually going to be... You know, you would like to say three-way, but it's not really going to be a three-way. It's actually going to be a two-way speaker with a powered subwoofer in each channel. So that's going to be really neat. We're going to show you what's going to be powering that and everything. Uh, but this is the the actual woofer itself. This is the W5-1138 SMF. It is a very powerful woofer. Now, the first design was going to have this uh, side-mounted, which is why I had redesigned the W5 in the first place. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen that video, check out that video where I redesigned a slot port for this. But the new one is actually going to have the front slot port, which is going to look like this. Now, this is actually the subwoofer that the customer uh, built from my kit that I designed him. I designed him a flat pack and sent it out to him, and, and then he designed it. And he just really raved about it, about having uh, no port noise at all and just being a really nice, flat, clean sub. So we're going to be using that same enclosure for this subwoofer. However, it's going to have to change a little bit, and that's because it's going to contain a 2.1 speaker in it. So we're going to have to change the dimensions to keep the volume the same. How we're going to do that, I haven't quite worked that out. I have a couple ideas, and I'll run them by you, and I want to see what you guys think as well. But this is the driver we're going to be using. Let me get out my knife. All right. I couldn't find a smaller knife. This is a chef's knife which is only to be used to open up speaker packages. In fact, uh, you're not really supposed to use this for anything other than opening up your boxes of speakers. If you use something other than this, you're just doing it wrong. So let's go ahead and take this out. This is the RS100-4. This is actually a four inch full range driver that Dayton Audio does. Now this is their reference series. It is a really nice driver. I, I really like the reference series. Some people like the the paper cone better than the aluminum cone. I like the aluminum cone just because of the looks, although they are sometimes a little bit harder to work with as far as crossover design goes. But this is uh, the, the full range driver that's going in the front, but we are not going to be using this full range. We're going to be using this uh, in a sealed, separate sealed container as more of like a mid range. Where the crossover frequency is, I haven't quite decided yet. We're going to kind of figure that out with the tweeter. I have an idea of where I, I would like to see that, assuming all my uh, 
design work comes back correctly when I when I test this and build it. Uh, this actually needs to be in its own sealed compartment, which is going to have to sit inside that woofer. I'm thinking about just using some PVC pipe instead of actually building another MDF enclosure in there, but I haven't quite decided. I might just build an MDF enclosure. It's going to be easier to do that, but this is the actual driver itself. It's, it's a really neat driver. Now, you might be wondering, well, what are you going to be using for a tweeter, and how are you going to fit that? Well, that's where this comes in handy. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been saying, hey, can you do things other than Dayton Audio? And I know I did use the Dayton Audio full range as, as you know, the mid-range in this particular project. But everything else is not Dayton Audio. Now, it is from Parts Express. And that's where this tweeter comes in. Now, this is the TN28 and this is made by Hi-Vi. And this is a really neat tweeter. You see, it's, it looks almost like a bullet. Now this will actually sit on top of the box and will be sitting above, you know, of course, the mid-range and the woofer. And this is going to be providing some of the high-end frequencies. Uh, exactly what range, like I said, we, it's to be determined still. Now I've never used this particular tweeter and of course there's always uh, things that you have to worry about when you use a product that you haven't used before, but uh, I think this is going to be very exciting. This is one of the, the must-haves from Joe and Tell. we got to use this tweeter, and honestly, I'm excited to use it because, like I said, I haven't used it yet, so this will be exciting to go ahead and try, and I think it will give a really nice look at the end as well. Now, you might be wondering why we're doing a 2.1. Well, the first thought process was to make this into like these speakers that would sit on your desk and you could just power them and have that nice bass right there. Uh, and then it's kind of evolved since then. We want to be able to make this more of a speaker that you can use with like a home theater receiver, um, also a speaker that you can use just as like a 2.1 listening experience if you want. But we wanted to make sure the bass was adjustable and that's for a couple reasons. One, some of you guys like more bass than others, but two, you can also adjust it depending on how far away you are. If you have a bigger room that needs to fill more bass, and you might turn that up a little bit more. Now, because of that, we need to have an adjustable crossover on it, and that's where this comes in. This is the Lapai LP210PA. This is a plate amplifier. We're actually going to have two of these, one in each woofer. Now, this is a 2.1, meaning that it has a power source for a left and a right speaker and a subwoofer, and it does have variable controls on it. For those of you who haven't watched that video, you should check it out, because this is actually a really nice little unit. But if you notice, it does have the variable controls, and I did point on the back that you can actually solder to this. I will be soldering directly to this. So because of that, that means that we're only going to be using a line in. Now I know what you're thinking is, okay, so there's it's a 2.1 amplifier, so are you going to be powering the tweeter and the mid-range separately? Probably not, maybe. Um, it's been discussed of whether we're going to be doing that or not. I, I don't think we're going to be doing that because uh, the woofer is so much lower sensitivity than the mid-range and the tweeter. I think that once we start powering those separately, they're just going to be overpowering of the woofer. Although, like I said, I don't have it in the box yet, so it's hard to say. Some of that will be coming down to uh, testing and testing and testing and testing until we know for sure whether we want to self-power that or not. Now, you'll notice that it does have RCAs on the back, and because of that, you can actually use your 5.1 channel pre-out on your amplifier, your home theater amplifier, directly into these. So you can use these as front, left, right, and even center speakers for like a surround sound system. So how cool would that be to have a separate subwoofer in each one of your speakers set up in a surround sound? That, I think, would be really, really neat. So this is the build that we have coming up with you. All right, guys, now if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, or any thoughts about any of these drivers, if you've used any of them, if you have some thoughts on them, I would love to hear your thoughts as well. Otherwise, um, we'll go ahead and get started on this build very shortly. Now, one other thing I'd like to ask you guys is, do you want me to share the plans with you afterwards, or is this something that you don't really care about the plans? So if you guys want the plans, let me know, and we will talk about how to get those plans for you. 
Now, I do want to thank my patrons for being uh, aware of what has been going on in my life and being very supportive of that. So thank you so much for that. I do really appreciate that. The other thing that I want to just let you guys know is that if you want to support the channel as a patron, I would definitely appreciate it. There is a link down in the description, of course, to that and other ways to connect with me. Like if you want a custom speaker design from TD Audio, there are, of course, links in the description that way as well. But as always, I really appreciate the uh, views that you guys have been giving and, of course, the support. All right, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, like I said, just hit me up. Thanks and have a great day.